I couldn't pass on this barn find. <laughs> Boy, have I told my wife that a few times. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect. What an amazing story. That might be the story of my day. Hi, it's Tom Cotter. Welcome to Barn Find Hunter's new reaction series, where instead of stumbling through barns and forests and fields to find old cars, I'm actually looking at photographs and videos that you've submitted to the forum. So if you'd like to submit cars that you've found, trucks, maybe even motorcycles, to the Barn Find Hunter Reaction Series, just follow the link on the description below. So the Barn Find Hunter Reaction Series, we're asking you to send us photographs of cars you found. Um, maybe they're your cars, maybe they're a neighbor's car. But some people took it upon themselves to do that anyway. And one was this Pantera that we found in New Hampshire. So I think you'll enjoy seeing the transformation this car has made from being uh, kind of this mm. ant-infested, mosquito-ridden Pantera in a storage container sitting on the, near the coast of New Hampshire to what it has become today. So would you introduce yourself, please, and say where you're from? Hi, uh, my name is Pete Weeks, and I live uh, in Windsor, Colorado. So how is it that you knew about that car? I knew uh, about that car because I am originally from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And <laughs> I, actually, I actually worked for... Bob Fleshman, who owned the Pantera and all those other cars that you were uh, describing. Um, and I worked for him as a teenager uh, back in uh, 81 ish and uh, in his body shop. And oh. his really cool car was always parked in the corner. And of course, he always had these neat stories about uh, yeah. racing it in 1980 in the, in the US Express with uh, Rick Carey. Uh, so I, I, I just remember the car. It was black at the time. Uh, it was a beautiful car. Uh, he was always tinkering with it though. Mm -hmm. And as all these years gone by, I obviously moved to Colorado many, many years ago, but still stay in touch with uh, friends and family that I uh, grew up with in, in Portsmouth. And that uh, summer of 2017, a friend of mine texted me concerning a car auction in Portsmouth and it showed a couple of cars that I recognized and said, are these Bob's cars? And I said, I do believe they are. So flew back to Portsmouth, looked at the car, was heartbroken because, well, you saw the condition it was in. <laughs> I hadn't seen it in 40 years or whatever it's been, but I ended up purchasing the car there at auction. So you didn't know about it through the video. You knew about it through other means. Interesting. Yes. Oh. Right. Right. Uh, being there. So I stuck it in a storage, uh, had it shipped here to Colorado. I made arrangements and had it and transported it here. Uh, the car was, you know, partially disassembled. It had no engine in it, but there were wrapped up plastic components behind the car. It looked like maybe the heads have just been done. It looked like the block had been machined. I think I got the impression the transaxle looked like it was all gone through. Is that all right? Yeah, the, it had, but uh, by the time I got everything, he had, had done the engine. Uh, but like you say, the heads weren't back on it or anything. And they'd just been exposed to all those elements for so long that uh, yeah. I just had a machine shop go through it uh, and redo the whole thing. We actually built it. So it is the original engine. Uh, that Three, you, 350, uh, 351 yeah. Windsor, I guess, right? Cleveland. Cleveland, okay. Yeah. And which is now a 408 stroker is what we built it into. I put um, the Fitec uh, fuel injection, fuel yeah. injection uh, on it. Yeah, it seems to be it's my third. Uh, I did another Chevy pickup a few years ago and I put that on. Uh, that was my first time and I was really happy with it. So I did it with this Pantera. Uh, it's, uh, I think that we to put it on the dyno um, at the machine shop before I installed it in the car. It, it had a they tested it with a four barrel carburetor at that time, but um, the horsepower, um, four, about 470 horse, I believe is what, what it's pushing now. Um, and then I had another gentleman here in Colorado in Castle Rock, uh, Colorado, actually go through that transmission for me as well uh, and polished, it had the outside uh, aluminum casing polished nice and shiny. Was it complete? Did it, was everything there? 80%. Probably, and but unfortunately, a lot of what was there wasn't very in good shape. Mm -hmm. um, everything from the seats to well, the engine and was all there. I was actually able to reuse a lot of the suspension. 
uh, as far as the control arms go. So as I remember, uh, Panteras generally had rust issues in the back, right, in the rear suspension area. They, they did, and it was uh, very minor there, but actually it was in really good condition, especially coming from New England. Oh, cool. Uh, so I, I actually, when I got the car, I actually put it on a rotisserie and had and completely stripped everything inside and out and had a guy come out and uh, do uh, the dustless crushed glass on it. Yeah. Rather than rather than dipping the body, he did mm -hmm. it right here at at, uh, at my house for me. So inside, outside, underneath, <laughs> everywhere you could think of was stripped down to the to the bare bones. As I remember, it was like a boy racer. Somebody tried to make a Lamborghini Countach or something with fender flares and and gold wheels and stuff. Is is that the way you are making it? The the, the flares um, that were put on it were fiberglass right. flares. And it was what they called a Group 4 Pantera, mm -hmm. which is uh, De Tommaso made a handful of those with those fat flares on them, basically for the racetrack. Mm -hmm. um, I completely removed those. They're actually steel flares that I uh, bought out of California, front and rear, to put on the car. And how long did it take you to redo that car? Well, I finished probably 95% of it or so about a year ago. <laughs> So really just a couple of years, mm -hmm. maybe three years. Are you in that business? Is that what you do? I, I, I'm not any longer, but uh, again, is working for Bob as a teenager and come to find out, uh, you know, at the age of 57, that's the only thing I've ever done. And I actually owned a uh, collision repair center here in Colorado that I sold uh, to Caliber Collision uh, back in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, so what a great project it was to come across that 2017 to keep me busy oh, here at home. <laughs> no kidding. Can you, can, do you know any of the details of him driving that thing bonsai across the country? Very, very little bit. Uh, I'm trying to remember some of the stories, but uh, um, the time they got pulled over uh, in Texas and had to go to court that day, I think he heard that story. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And, and then another one, when Bob was, he drove back across to the East Coast by himself. He was pulled over in Ohio by a state trooper. And the uh, the trooper left him on the side of the road because he'd asked Bob if he could just drive the car. So he left Bob on the side of the interstate with his uh, trooper car and took this Pantera. <laughs> so how many miles have you put on it since it's, it's been finished? Just a few hundred miles. You know, I really enjoy uh, building it and working on it. Certainly enjoy driving it as well. I've made some YouTube videos uh, showing some of the progress from start to finish. And as a matter of fact, I just, uh, my son and I put one out just the other day. Uh, we took it out. The weather here was beautiful in the 70s, so we went for a drive. Uh, not too far from here from home and, and, and did some more video with it. Were you looking for a Pantera or was it the fact that you found this old Pantera that you knew about? Is that what made you say, I got to have it? It, it? it was. It was. I wasn't necessarily looking for a Pantera to build, but I was in the back of my mind looking for a project uh, to keep me busy here um, because it does. It's not just a 72 Pantera to me. It brings back a lot of the memories I have as a teenager and seeing it and as a teenager it was by far probably the coolest car i'd ever seen at that at that point you know so a really neat car yeah funny you're, drive. You're, the, you're the perfect guy to have it you are the perfect guy that car was part of your life when you were a young guy and now it's part of it again what a, what a it's like a cinderella story it's great yeah and I remember your video, you'd actually mentioned something, you know, this project, you know, it'd be a tough one. It'd be perfect for like a body man or an auto body guy to take this over. <laughs> well, Pete, I really appreciate you taking the time and bringing us up to speed on, on your project. And it's done. I mean, a lot of the guys we're talking to, they're only halfway done. So you're done and, and enjoying the car. So that's, that's great. So listen, thanks. And, you know, if you come across any other cool barn finds, keep us, keep us in the loop. I, I will. Thanks for having me on and uh, appreciate it. Really love the car. Yeah. Thanks.